Hello, my name is David Shiner, and today we'll be discussing RSS feeds and how they can be used in an educational classroom. Uh, first, what are RSS feeds? Well, RSS stands for Really Simple Publication. Uh, this enables publisher to syndicate data automatically. In simple terms, an RSS feed allows users to follow blogs, websites, Twitter feeds, and other content on the web to follow. Um, RSS feeds solves a problem for people who regularly use the web. Uh, it allows you to easily stay informed by retrieving the latest content from sites you're interested in. This allows students to save time by not needing to visit each site individually and ensure your privacy. By not needing to join each site's email newsletter, the number of sites offering RSS feeds is growing rapidly. The RSS feeds, again, allows, enables publishers to syndicate data. It allows users to follow blogs, websites, Twitter feeds, and other content on the web. Here's an example of two different ways two different students using the computer without RSS feeds and then students using with RSS feeds and just shows how fast and easy a student that subscribes to RSS feeds can get content. Uh, new content is published and pushed through the RSS feeds. Now to start using RSS feeds you need to use a web-based feeder such as Google Reader or Feedly. I preferred using Feedly and will show you a demo on how to use this later in this tutorial. Feedly is a cloud-based news aggravator application for various web browsers and mobile devices. It allows actually to be run on your Apple phone or an Android-based phone. It compiles news feeds from a variety of online sources uh, for the user to customize and share with others. Uh, Feedly created a platform that uses RSS feeds, online storage, and social media interrogation to connect users with information they find interesting. Um, again, one of the best things about this is that they allow users to connect Feedly to their smartphone, tablet, and computer. Uh, this is something I encourage all my students to use. Uh, as you can see on the right there, um, there's a Feedly app that can be downloaded to your smartphone or tablet. Uh, this allows for any feed to be sent to your phone and most students today have a smartphone that they like to use uh, so this allows them to do so. Uh, the last thing is how we're going to use RSS feeds in my classroom. Well this allows students to receive real-time updates on their phones at home and at school. It allows students to receive tweets regarding homework and projects. It allows for collaboration with students in the class. I use Twitter quite frequently in the class, and we can get real-time feeds going into the Twitter, especially with the hashtag, uh, using a hashtag for the classroom so students can see that. So I have all my students follow me on the web. Uh, now we're gonna go into Feedly. Uh, easiest thing to do is use Google and type in Feedly. Once you connect to Feedly, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is then to create an account. Uh, now I already have an account, account created. It takes literally about a minute to do. Uh, but once you create a Feedly account, um, it allows you to set up different communities for yourself. So I have two different communities set up. I have a technology and a technology education. And it allows you then to set up and organize your different feeds into different categories to help you or keep, to help you stay organized. Um, I have two sites, Technology and Technology Education, that I'm currently using uh, to get RS feeds. Um, students uh, in my classroom will use this for their current events uh, that we do related to technology. So once a week, I have them use their blog and use their Feedly accounts to uh, find a blog article related to the lesson that we are currently working on. So if it happens to be something on wikis, uh, they can do a search on wikis in the class and they can uh, subscribe to that 
that blog and start reading about different uh, websites or different blogs that are going to discuss the use of wikis in the classroom. And then as my students use them, they then would read the article and write a current event um, in their blog. Some other things that we, Feedly allows you to do is uh, recently read, so you can see what you read recently. It's something good for teachers to use so they can actually see what the students have been reading. Uh, this is just a preference page to allow students to set up their preferences on how they want their feeds to be coming in. So there's different things you can go through. The next one is themes, so it allows you to create um, and be a little more original. And the last thing is Feedly actually offers a pro edition. Uh, if you pay an extra, it, Feedly is free. I have my students do the free, uh, the free Feedly, but if you'd like, you can pay five dollars a month extra and uh, receive uh, basically extra options. It allows you to do more search articles and gives you a little more options to work with. Up across the top, you'll notice there's different things in Feedly as well in terms of uh, how you organize your readings. Uh, the nice thing is once you get an article, you can go in and search and find and tag it, add to podcasts, um, add to your Evernote, save for later. You can also add, attach, send it to Google+, Plus, along with your Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and we'll also send it as an email. So there's a lot of different options available in Feedly. Uh, that make it makes it real easy to to get media off the internet fast and easy. Now this is how we use it in our class. Again, I use it on a. I have all my students have it, use it on their smartphones. Uh, this way, again, they can uh, find articles related to the class and also be able to collaborate and see different things in real time. I hope you learned something about this tutorial today uh, regarding RSS feeds and please follow me on Twitter. Again, RSS feeds, really simple syndication. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you.